east, one street decided to have a street barbecue. I thought that was a marvelous idea. You know, they get people to come, bring food to one place, have a barbecue, and know your neighbors, you know? And establish that sense of whakawhanaunga, which is, you know, acting as though you were whanau. When you're at the marae, see all the tamariki on the marae, they're all yours. They don't say, you don't say to the parent, hey, I'll go and get your tamariki. See, see it belongs to you when you're on the marae. Um, so when we're at home, it's the same thing applies, you know, when we're at home. They're all of our, our mokopuna. So we all take responsibility. And um, uh, it's good uh, that, uh, that you watch over them, so you watch them grow, you know, it's like uh, planting the, the kapuna, the seed, you know, you give it the water, you, you nurture it, you feed it. There's, that, there's a, an African saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And uh, that's exactly how we were brought up. So all my mum's uh, generation of women were my mothers and same with, with my dad. All his generation of men were our dads. So the responsibility for raising children really went right across the extended family. And that was, for me, that was kind of normal. You know, it, it wasn't, it didn't seem strange. If you look at the expression the, that we use, te harakeke, to describe a whanau, te harakeke is talking about not just one shirt, not two, three, we're talking about harakeke that grow in big clumps and clumps that grow in uh, uh, a range of clumps, te pā harakeke. Um, and if you have a look at the, the harakeke plant, the flax plant, you have in the middle there the three core shoots. You have the parents, and the central core shoot in the middle there. And any um, botanist, any uh, gardener will know that if you pluck out those three shoots, that's it, your, your flax plant has had it. Uh, during the war, when we were growing up as kids, we had very little in the way of money, but we lived well. We lived off the land and the sea. We planted food and um, people would, would share in the work and then come and take what they needed for their families. Now a good example is my dad had a boat, uh, so did uh, two, no, one of his relatives, uh, and there was a Pākehā man who married, married into the whānau. He had a boat, so there were three boats, and those boats would go fishing, usually at the, on the same day. And when they came back, everyone came and took what they wanted in the way of fish. You know, it was just uh, the normal thing. If the individual and the whānau are doing well, then the hapu will do well. And if we can, if each whānau can work with other whānau, that makes the hapu strong. And if the hapu is strong, then the iwi will be strong. We have to find new modes of dealing with that. And that's where groups like churches, uh, school groups, uh, urban Māori organisations, they have to start developing those new modes. Um, I do it at a Mangere. Uh, the congregation I deal with there, the people I encounter there, are from every iwi. And I know most of them have very little connection with their own iwi. But you've got a, you've got a foot in the door. As soon as they can name where they come from, then you've got a foot in the door. But once you get that, then the process of of healing and uh, maybe asking them to start doing their own healing in terms of whānau violence that uh, gets some traction.